Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 245th episode of the Sales Podcast. I am Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. If you missed 244, check out Zach Smith. He's the CEO, founder of Funded Today. They have raised a lot of money on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. In fact, they are the number one fundraiser on Kickstarter. Uh, the guy is killing it, and he is still a young dude. Uh, you will like his story, and you will appreciate the lessons learned and what we talk about on this new economy, right? The way people are raising money, funding ideas, um, which is really, that was a, a pivotal thing for me to learn back in the day. And that is first sell your product, then go build it. If you can't do pre-sales, if you can't collect money up front, telling people the story, selling the vision, giving them a deal, right? Giving them a discount. Say, hey, if you're an early adopter, I'm going to cut you a deal, right? Maybe it's a one-time payment for lifetime access for something or, you know, 50% off or whatever. If you can't get these bleeding edge early adopters to buy in on the vision ahead of time, what makes you think they're going to buy in once it's built, right? And your prototypes and production and delivery and storage cost you two times, three times, 10 times what you thought it would be. And it takes... 12 times longer to launch. So, you know, Kickstarter is is a smart way to go uh, to validate your ideas. And Zach and his team, they take on all the risk. Uh, so it's an interesting story, interesting model. Uh, like I said, the guys are doing great. So check out the notes. Check out uh, the interview on uh, number 244. Uh, coming up next is Minnie Hoffman. I've known Minnie for several years. Uh, he's out in Brooklyn um, running p Group. Great guy, great human being, uh, runs a great business, ethical business. Uh, we talk about his faith, uh, how that has helped him in business and in life. Um, and you'll understand why when we get to the interview. Uh, but the way he has built his business over the years, uh, you know, in Brooklyn, right? I mean, he's right in, in the heart of uh, capitalism, right? The capital of capitalism, if you will. Uh, and he's built a thriving business. So uh, you're in for a treat there. Today, we've got Jack Kosakowski. I've known him for several years in the uh, online marketing, uh, marketing automation, inbound marketing, CRM space. Uh, he joined forces with some folks. He's doing training. He's doing consulting. Um, he's turning social marketing into social selling, which is what we all need to understand. I think we've got a little carried away with social media. Uh, people thinking, you know, all these vanity metrics thinking they were something, but, you know, many years ago, uh, an early edition of the sales podcast, I had, uh, Jay bear on, uh, and Jay is with convince and convert well-known speaker author. Uh, you know, and he mentioned on his interview that, Hey, if you don't get email marketing, right, you don't need to be doing social media, you know, and that was a shot across the bow because, you know, and he drove home the point as well that. You know, doing social media is great for deepening the relationship with your customers. It's not that great necessarily to, for creating new business. Uh, and now things have changed so much. You know, I had Jay on back on episode number 15. Uh, still worth listening to. Um, the principles, the foundations are right. But, you know, now more than ever, social media is really a pay-to-play platform. You know, if you're not doing Facebook ads, driving visitors to your site, pixeling them so you can remarket to them, uh, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Uh, so, you know, social media is a great place to deepen the relationship, to drive initial traffic, and then have a follow-up sequence, multimedia, multi-step, ideally, uh, to bring in that sale. Uh, so that's why I love having Jack on. He shares some great insight. Uh, so you're in for a treat. As I mentioned in the last episode, you know, a couple things I'm working on, uh, tools that are free and even can make you money. And number one is um, a tool for helping you decide and choose which platform is best for you for CRMs, for sales and marketing. And that's bestcrmforme.com. Uh, it's a free quiz. We're always working on it, adding platforms, adjusting the points as new features come out because uh, you get a weighted average for each answer. Uh, and then at the end, it spits out uh, both your custom result. We'll send you an email with 
different platforms rank ordered from least expensive to most expensive. Um, and that's, you know, that's a, a unique word, expensive, right? Um, something may cost less as a dollar value per month, but what is it costing you in opportunity? Right. Some of these tools that I show are as little as $25 a month. Some are $800 or $2,400 a month. So you'd say, well, hey, that $2,400 a month tool is more expensive than the $25 a month tool. Yes. As far as outlays on your credit card each month, yes. But what else might you need? Right. Maybe you're paying for other tools that are driving the cost up so you can get more functionality that the $25 tool doesn't give you. And now you're wasting time, you know, cutting and pasting, uh, bringing documents and information between platforms or it's lost opportunities, right? Things you actually can't get to because you're messing around with that quote unquote, more affordable platform. So a lot of things to consider, uh, take the quiz. If you still have questions, uh, you'll get a link there for a free consultation with me. Uh, directly to help you make the right choice. Uh, The other thing uh, that I mentioned is my referral program. If you head on over to referwest.com, if you know people looking at Entreport, Infusionsoft, HubSpot, uh, and they buy, you know, I'll pay you up to $500 uh, or up to $800 in coaching and consulting. So if you know somebody looking for a platform, Send them my way, pretty please. I got kids to feed, braces to pay for, cars. Decker, the diabolical lab, needs food. And every now and then, I like a little whiskey. I'm just saying, you know. But hey, thanks for uh, listening. Let's bring on Jack and get down to this interview. Jack Kosakowski, the wild man from Scottsdale, (laughs) Arizona. You're going to have to lay back in your chair so your mic doesn't come in so hot. This will be a challenge, but welcome to the Sales Podcast, man. How the heck are you? Dude, I am, I am amazing. You? I'm good, but hey, I'm, ans- I'm asking the questions here. <laughs> Don't be turning this stuff around on me already. See, that's what people do. That's, that's, that's what good salespeople do. They turn it around. So I've been learning them in my jujitsu class. They get always always ask you the right question so I can get the right answer, baby. Flip it out, use their momentum, <laughs> flip it on them, and then come back and squash them like a grape. But we don't do that here. No, we don't. No, we don't. So, hey, man, thanks for coming on the show. For um, You and I have chatted for quite some time. Um, but for our friends that may not know you, would you mind take a minute or two, give us a little thumbnail sketch of who you are, who you do be, and uh, then we'll go down the rabbit hole? Yeah, so um, I am part uh, you know, business partner in a global agency called The Creation Agency. So I run the U.S. piece of the business, and uh, we're about a little over a year old now in the U.S. So we're you know, growing, growing at a steady pace, right, trying to figure out the whole scalable aspect of the business, but it's going. Um, and then I, you know, I guess um, one of the top voices for you know, evangelizing and, and proving the social selling methodology that everybody, you know, turned into fluff. I'm trying to turn it into revenue or working on that as you per se. Right. right. Um, and you know, my passion is, is a lot of different things, but my number one passion is how to teach sales reps, how to use digital to turn it to dollars. Um, and, that's what I. That's what I live for. And that's what I do on a daily basis, among all the other things that our agency does, alongside that. So you use an interesting word there, trying. So are are y'all turning social efforts into profit? Well, so we don't. I mean, we just we're doing our first webinar next week. Um, so all of the business that I've generated and have built this agency on so far is all been through social. Oh, wow. And that's just uh, less than a year though, right? A uh, year and year and a month, about 1.1 1. 1 months. <laughs> one, point, one year, one month. 1.1 1. 1 years. Um, yeah. <laughs> Math so, is not my, my strong point, right? So, so everything, so you're saying you're just doing what? 
I mean, building up, you got 37,000 followers personally on Twitter and, and Facebook and LinkedIn. I mean, is it just you producing and sharing content, digital content, like no paid advertising, no PPC, no SEM. So it's all your organic efforts on digital platforms. That's helping you grow the U S division of this company. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the UK division, they crush it, man. I mean, we've got, I don't know, I think it's nine, eight or nine of the fortune 500 as clients in the, in the UK. And if you notice, we don't have a big, when I came on, we didn't have a big online presence, right? I mean, a lot of it is reputation based in the UK. So, you know, when I was coming to the US, I said, listen, we got to have a digital reputation. Like we are doing big things in the UK, but how do I, how do I send that message to the US, right? Because that's where I've got to drum up the business. So I used my personal brand when I came from Acton, which, you know, I didn't have any support at Acton, right? There were actually many more people against me inside the organization than for me, even though, you know, they let me get by with a lot of stuff for a long time. <laughs> more than you know most companies do um but i didn't have paid advertising you know i didn't do all that stuff i mean when i came to the creation i had built my whole following through you know engagement content and all the different strategies that i had worked on when i was a b2b sales rep one-to-one -one selling marketing automation technology right i created these processes i knew what worked what didn't because i was using social to close deals at Acton, that's how I got the President's Club. You know, that's how I put up $1.3 million at a startup in two and a half years in revenue with a 9 to 12K deal size. Right. So, and so, oh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, go ahead. So, you know, my, my whole idea with social selling is that usually 99% of people are talking about social marketing, right? Which is an inbound process, right? You put out content, somebody fills out a form or they, you know, engage back. So what I decided was that why would it, why would I wait? In sales, nothing, no revenue ever goes on the board from waiting, right? Unless you're getting lucky. Right. So I said, let's turn this into what it should be, which is an outbound, one-to-one, -one, strategic, targeted, value-based selling methodology, which is I'll go to the buyer and I will give them so much value that I will get visible and I will get connected to them and I will earn the right to ask for their time and their money. And I, you know, I've been working on this for a really long time. Now at Act On, it was a little bit different because I was a one-to-one -one sales rep, right? Everybody said, oh, we can't, nobody could do what you do, right? So when I came to Creation Agency, the, um, the founder, Jason Sibley and I, he said, Jack, this is the future of selling, right? I know it, you know it. Now let's figure out how to make this scalable at the enterprise level. So for the last you know, year, um, we've been working with clients to try to figure out how do you go into an enterprise organization, mid-market with tons of reps, and get them to do this without time-sucking their day away, right? And, and, and get, putting more on their plate. We had to figure out how to use social to make their life actually easier to get faster results. Right. Because that's always the, the killer is that people end up goofing off on social media, they get distracted, um, they procrastinate, they, they tell the boss that they're working, you know, I'm doing research boss and that doesn't pay the bills, you know? So, so how can you do social selling today to create that outbound, uh, sales qualified sales opportunity? Uh, is there, is there some magic, um, to your method? Well, I can tell you that the first magic is that your salespeople will all be on social all day long, no matter if you like it or not. So you, it, as a sales leader today, go walk your sales floor 10 times. And, you know, even if somebody's on a sales call, they're on their mobile, right? Look at their girlfriend, the ex-girlfriend's Facebook page, right? It's, it's happening no matter if you want it or not. You're paying for your salespeople to be on social unless you're just crazy cop you know, dictator where you tell everybody they can't have phones on the floor or something like that, which would just be absurd. So you've got to figure out, you know, the sales reps need the tools and the education to understand that they can be on social and that they can actually drive offline conversations. They can create conversation. They can strengthen the conversation with people they have in the sales process. They can um, 
influence the conversation with current buyers, right? Stay in front of your buyers, be their advocate, be the, be the value that you sold them on past your product. And when salespeople understand that these little things matter, and what I call value touches in the sales process, we're all taught in sales to sell, sell, sell. So I call it force versus value selling, right? You know, get on the phone, interrupt somebody's day, tell them what they want to hear. You know, it's all about me, 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 me. You know, even though, you know, this is, I always laughed at this joke, the 30 second elevator pitch, right? You know, call somebody out of the blue. Do you think that there's any elevator pitch in the world that buyers are going, oh, that was phenomenal, man. They just created urgency. I can't wait to get on a demo. So you've got to do the things proactively in the world of digital, right? When it comes to selling, you've got to proactively get in front of your buyer. You've got to get visible. You've got to get valuable and connected six months before they even know they're ready to buy. And salespeople, it all starts with knowing who your target buyers are, right? And, and, and that's where a lot of organizations, they don't, this, most salespeople don't even really know who they're selling to. And I, when I say that, I'm not saying title and things like that. I'm talking about like looking at the data to say, you know, here's the target 25 accounts in your territory. Here's the, pe- here's the four decision makers in those accounts. We know that this is a long sales process. So we're going to have sales touches and value touches, right? We're still going to call them. But before we call them, we're going to do something that shows them that we care, right? We've done our research. We're going we're gonna to share their webinar to help them get more business before we ask them for their business. We're going to, you know, from a personal perspective, this is where sales reps don't get, go wrong. You know, if you're passionate about something, if your buyer's passionate about something, you see it on Instagram and they're raising money for a foundation that their kid's a part of, you, the best thing you can ever do to get into conversation with somebody is with the right motive, really give a shiz, right? Like my buddy Kenny Madden says, Give a shiz. Say to them, you know what? I just put 25 bucks in your GoFundMe. This is un- unbelievable and incredible what you're doing. And you know what? I'm going to share this with my network because the one thing that we're all craving for, every organization, is visibility. Right. And if you can give me visibility and you can become the advocate for me personally and professionally, I'll probably want to reciprocate and give you my time to hear what you have to say. Right. Yeah, I mean, I see... Um... I see. Thing, I, I do this that Tampa Bay Frogman swim, right? And raise money for the Navy SEAL Foundation, and uh, so I just did it you know, three weeks ago. And you, do you know uh, who Sully is, the OxyClean guy? Yeah, he's a swimmer. He, he lives there in Tampa. He's buddies with my buddy, and because we're in the same charity, I said, "Hey, you want to come on the podcast?" So he's coming on the sales podcast next week. He had to reschedule. He was supposed to be on last week. He had a uh, an, an eight eight hour home shopping network day, right? But because we're in the same charity, boom, I, I get you know, it. What's you that? know, you just hit a point, right? So, so I look at social selling as more than just social media, right? Media media is the social part of social selling, but social selling is way bigger than that, right? Social social is the foundation of selling. It always has been. When my grandpa was knocking doors at seven o'clock at night trying to get into people's house to sell them fire alarms. What was it? Social. Hey, you know, Hey Jim, what's going on? Just wanted to stop by and, you know, see if we could talk sometime and invite you to a dinner, right? The old school way of selling. What you're talking about is leading with value, right? I think that this is where sales, the digital age gives you a competitive advantage in sales is you actually have all the data from someone. And it used to be the old adage where they'd say, well, you know, ask them the right questions and they'll give you the right answers, right? We had to like ask people for stuff because we couldn't find it about them anywhere else. But now people are giving it to you, right? They, they're telling you what they want, what's important to them personally, professionally. And if you in sales don't understand how to take that information and flip it to be ask value versus ask, then, then you're, you're going to die, right? right? Because begging, begging for business is not, is not relevant anymore. People just, it's not happening. I, I, I I'm not going to even argue the points or give you statistics because if I, if I have to tell you that, then you're way farther behind. But right. what you just said was you met solely, but did you ask him if he wanted to do a marketing automation pitch? You know, <laughs> you said, no, you said, I want you to come on my podcast and I'm going to give you to my network, right? right? I'm going to ask, this is a prime example of what I think is good selling. 
I'm going to bring you on. I'm going to expose you to my whole network and make you look like a champion, right? That's value versus ask. And you know what? At the end of the call, I have a feeling offline, solely might go, you know, Wes, we should probably do some business together. Hey, you know, that'd be cool. And realistically, I mean, that dude's super famous. He's more famous than me. He has an established network. Mm-hmm. You know, he probably doesn't care if he gets any exposure uh, because he's pretty well established. Uh, I, see, I, I disagree with that. I think anybody that has a big audience understands going to other people, even if they have a small audience. I'll tell sure. you, the most, the most engagement, I've, I've spent my career going on people that were new podcasters saying, hey, man. I just need a little bit of help, dude. Will you come on my show? Give me a little push. And you know what? I would rather do. I would rather take a little podcast all day long and help some guy, some sales rep that's just trying new things, man. They're trying to innovate because those little audiences over time, what people don't realize, going on one little podcast to another, your your network right starts to go like this. Sure. And it just it just doubles itself. And you know, Soli, he probably knows this, right? He got to where he was because. The little podcast got them there. Well, yeah, and, and there's a couple of things, you know, in this, in that. So one, it was we're both involved in the same charity, uh, and we're both more than just a little involved, right? We raise money and we we get out there and swim 3.1 miles, right, for this charity. So it's, I mean, we're involved, right? But it's also I had a good referral because my buddy John is buddies with him. And so that right angle selling, right? Who do you know that, that knows them? And so John, all I did, all I had to do was ask John, bam, John immediately texts me and Sully and says, Hey, Wes, Sully says, yes, here's his cell phone number done. Right. With a strong referral, strong recommendation. Uh, but how, but how do you, okay, okay. So let's talk about this, right? So it used to be in the old days, the only way that you got a referral is if you had shaken somebody's hand, right? Like you had to in person meet people or talk them on the phone, whatever that may be. But now we can connect the digital dots, man. Digital with the right technologies can tell you who are the people that you're the closest to, the closest to, right? And, and I believe that if you don't understand social in this day and age, especially in sales, you don't understand networking. Because I can tell you how many deals that I've got from people that I don't even know that said, dude, I read your content. I've been reading it for a year and a half. And I know you're the man in social selling. And I'm going to warm lead you so-and-so over to you. And I've never even talked to these people, Wes. Never. They've connected the digital dots to me. Now, if I do the reverse role and I go do my own research, because I should be in sales, trying to connect the digital dots. And a lot of times that means I'm not trying to sell. I'm not asking, Wes, will you warm lead me into so-and-so? I'm saying, hey, Wes, you know, I want to, I'm doing a guest, I'm doing a blog post on X, Y, and Z. I know you're connected to so-and-so. I'd love to get their feedback, right? Because I'm trying to think of the way that I can get a network with and, and lead with value versus ask. This is a mindset shift that digital allows us to have in sales. We just have to think about the right things and the, the, the right way to connect with people. And we have to do it strategically using the technologies that are at our fingertips. Right. Yeah. yeah and I, I agree. I mean, humans haven't it. changed, right? You do it all day long. Just our, our means of communication. Uh, Let me, ha- uh, one question I want to ask you, and you do this very well, so I'm going to give you a compliment right now. Facebook. I, two years ago, if you would have told me so Facebook was the next, it was going to be the biggest channel for social selling and building proactive relationships and sales. I would have laughed at you, right? Facebook, I keep that for my friends and my family. Nobody's seeing my pictures of me in college getting drunk, right? Well, all of a sudden, one day somebody said, open up your network, right? Uh, Facebook. So about a year and a half ago, I did that. One of the first people I was, you know, watched and connected with you I was, it, from business perspective, was you. Dude, you... With, and I'm telling you, probably not even with, it's always with the right motive because you're just a great, funny person. I'll see you all the time just engaging on somebody's photo or this or that. And I can guarantee you that you don't know these people. You've never met a lot of them. Maybe you have. But, but that whole touches, right? Sales touches. If you look at everything as a touch and, and, and your touches were so valuable in the beginning with, with no motive except for, well, I'm going to connect with them. They're interesting. 
a little bit later, you find out they could be your target buyer, right? They post something on Facebook that makes it look interesting. And you've already done all these value touches beforehand. Who do they come to or, or who goes to them when they have a problem? Man, my marketing automation is screwed up. My infusion sucks. Dang it. Paid all this money for it and it's not working. And then you're like, hey, you know what? Direct message. I know we've been connected for a while. I would love to just go offline and, and see if I can help you, right? Right. I don't need to get any money from you. This is a new way of selling. <laughs> you're doing it. Right. I, I would love to know your numbers behind that. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Uh, they're, uh, I, I engage with a lot of people. I don't know. Now, I, I would have to go look. Social media is my number one source of traffic. Okay. Now, so sales, like I don't have a lot of people that will just hit me up like on Facebook privately and say, hey, can I buy something from you? So, so it's not big in that regard, but maybe they saw something and clicked and opted in on my site and then it dripped on them and then they hit the contact us and we set up a conversation. Uh, so, so I know through all of that and looking at my metrics that social is my top traffic generator. But the problem, here's the problem with, with social, and this is what's getting better, you know, the tracking, right? So the multi-touch attribution. And I don't think a lot of marketers, I know a lot of marketers, 80% don't understand multi-touch attribution and sales even, you know, 90%. But digitally surrounding your buyer in, the, in, in this age is the most important thing that can happen because what do they say? Five to six touch points before some, you drive somebody to your website today, right. right? So that means they have to see you. Five, you have to be so valuable five or six times, and, and you have to touch them emotionally in some type of way before you can even drive them to your website, right? Let them, let them get them to sell. So if I don't know if it's getting easier or harder. I couldn't tell you, right? Because I, I personally think it's easy because this stuff comes easy to me. I love social. I love people. I think if you're in sales and you don't, you need a new career. If I can get to as many people as possible with and, and lead with value in my in my mind and get around them as many, in many channels as possible, you know, it's not about Twitter, it's not about LinkedIn, it's not about cold calling, it's not about Facebook. It's about taking all of those and putting those around your buyer. And 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 a lot of times, if you have to pick up the phone, pick up the phone after you've digitally surrounded somebody because you take a cold call. And now you at least make it somewhat warm, right? right? And any any competitive advantage we can get in sales, I'll take it all day long. Right. Yeah, and you have to negotiate from a position of strength for sure. Um, and, and now, you know, the tracking piece is the hardest part, right? This is why I think you and I believe that we're so passionate about marketing automation. We get it, right? If you, you, you can't track, and this is what I laugh at marketers when they go, oh, we're tracking ROI. Go, okay, what are you using? Well, we're using MailChimp. I go, <laughs> And and you you think that's tracking ROI? I mean, right. there, you there nothing happens. There's no such thing, in my opinion, as an inbound lead anymore, right? Unless it's a referral. I re, I, I call a referral an inbound lead, right? Somebody says you're good. That's the best one. But other than that, if somebody signs up for your email list or responds or calls in. It's usually probably because you've done such a great job of doing all the things that needed to happen over time beforehand proactively. And now if, you know that's a marketing thing. Marketers have figured that out somewhat. They haven't figured out the tracking piece, but sales now has to come in. You know, sales has to start when, when you're running a campaign in marketing today, if, if, if that email goes out, that cold email or whatever it is, you're, however you're trying to get them engaged in the top of the funnel and sales doesn't go and start to get visible and valuable and start touching those people one-to-one -one while your marketing message is going out, you're doing it all wrong. Right. Now, is that easy? No. Is it expensive? Yes. But you know what? It's it's the only scalable model, in my opinion, because the companies are going to do it right. People are already catching on. I'm working with them. They're figuring this out, right? They're figuring out value versus ask, proactive versus reactive selling. And it's a powerful, powerful thing when you get it figured out. So if a company's got, you know, 10 salespeople, do they, do they tell them to make their Facebook profile private? So everybody doesn't see their political rants or their drunk bachelor party pictures. You know, how do you, how do you juggle that? 
I think I think that comes down to just professionalism, right? I think, you know, I've struggled with the political piece, right? You know, I've got a big audience. People listen. I've lost some friends or, or not necessarily friends, but I've lost some followers and stuff. I've backed up from it, right? I think that, you know, I've, I've been burnt by social media. As much as it's helped me, there's many times it's burnt me. So I think you have to step back. And there was this post I read the other day, which was like seven um, things to analyze before you post something political, right? I think when you're in sales, you got to realize that even if you go private, you know, everything you do in life, there's nothing private anymore. Right. So if you really, you know, especially a business owner, I think, I think even more now is like, you know, part of a, owning a business, I have to watch everything I do even more closely, man. It's like, because I can offend somebody by, by posting something that I don't even know that I'm offending them. Right. So salespeople are not the same. I think you just have to hire really good people, right? You got to hire people that, you know, have good morals and good values and good ethics. And that kind of vets it out because I, I just don't believe in the public thing, right? Or private thing. If you have to do something that's private, then <laughs> I probably don't want to hire you because I'm not really going to hire people that are. Well, it's, you know, Hey, somebody's 20 something years old. I don't know. I go back to a family reunion. I mean, I'm not doing anything illegal or immoral, but I'm drinking some beer, you know, um, Eating well, a lot if of you oysters. Have that are offended by that, then you're. I mean, we're dancing, we're cutting up, uh, but then yeah, on the political side, I don't know. Everybody's a snowflake now, so. Maybe. Well, I think there's a fine line, right? I think there's a fine line. You just don't go overboard, right? Be smart, be strategic. I think we're all at a place, and sales or not, nobody really gives a shit what we have. Our opinion is we're all emotionally involved in this thing one way or the other and it's not going to change no matter what post you put up so it's probably just smarter just to stay away from it right yeah and and i think of value for, i think of i think of social as value like i really analyze everything i post like what who's going to get value out of this like is this just something i think is funny or something i'm really passionate about because if i'm the only one that's passionate about this i'm going to hurt myself more than i'm going to help myself right. on social yeah just like selling right if you just if you throw up your product on somebody you're 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 giving them something that they don't really give a shit about like you do and you're gonna kill yourself social is no no different you can't just throw up on people what you want or what you think is important right but when you got like i said you got 10 you got 10 sales people working for you how do you how do you train them how do you set those parameters um i mean well, cause, I think you, cause one dumb salesperson can do more damage in a week doing stupid stuff on social media, then, um, then you can make up for in a year. Right? Well, you bring up a, a valid point. So I was talking to VP of sales about six months ago and he goes, well, why would I want to do social selling training? You know, if all my salespeople are on social, then that's a liability. I go, well, your salespeople are already on social. What's yeah. here's even more bit liability. Why not? Here's what you do. You don't train them on what they can and can't do and then figure out what happens. And right? then they do whatever. <laughs> So if you're going to do training with your sales team at the most minimal level, you might as well come in, teach them what they can't do, and then teach them how to move the needle with what they can do. Right. Right. You either you either are a, a you're either a, a team that's sales focused, buyer focused, and you will you want to go and get to your buyers wherever they live. Right. We, we don't control where we communicate with our buyers anymore. This is what I don't think the old traditional VPs of sales. They think, pound the phone, do this, do that. No, because here's the problem. If you're selling to your buyers the way that you think they should be sold, you're doing it all wrong. Because you need to go look at the data. How many of them are on LinkedIn? How many of them are on Twitter? How many of them are on Instagram? Because if you don't believe Instagram's blown up, you're out of your mind, right? But you, you got to look at this stuff. And I might be wrong. You know what? You might not have any buyers on there. And the data tells you to cold call them. Then you know what? Cold call till you're blue in the face. But if your buyers are not, or they're living everywhere else, it is your obligation to your buyer to communicate with them where they live. And that does not mean interrupting their day all the time and asking them for something. Right. Yeah, it's the old adage, you know, people are like, well, uh, what if I invest in all this training and my people, they, then they take that knowledge and they leave. And it's like, well, imagine if you don't give them any training and they stay. <laughs> well, well here's, here's, here's a thought. So marketing automation, right? All these companies are investing in it. And, and the best part about this is they spend all this money to make all these things happen, right? 
buyers are engaging and they're doing this, but they never spend any money to spend, show their sales team how to take that data that they're spending all this money on campaign money and technology on to figure out how they can actually capitalize on conversation. Right. Oh, we're going to wait till an inbound marketing automation leads comes in at a 60 score. Okay. Well, good luck with that yeah. because you've got 30 scores that are ready to convert, but you're too freaking lazy or selfish, or you don't have the right training to understand that that 30 score a lot of times is way more deadly than that 70 score. Right. But you're not going after them. So you know what's happening? Somebody is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to be that top of mind. So they think of you when they are ready. Um, man. That's how I start off social, right? Social is the only way to do it right. And to get results is to be value focused, right? If you're, if you're ask, if you're in sales and you're ask focused, which most sales people are, that's why they only 80% of their quota, right? All you can think about is how big your paycheck's going to be and how, you know, how bad you're going to crush it to get that bonus. No, because the thing is, social's even worse. So if you have that type of mentality and then you try to come to social, which is what happens with a lot of sales reps, well, I can't figure out why nobody wants to talk to me or nobody wants to buy. I just spammed 17 people asking them for their time and their money. Nobody said, what's up? <laughs> it's like, that's, that's the first the first mistake in sales is like trying to take that mindset out of people. Like eh, you didn't earn that time or the right to that money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So in a B2B world, where should salespeople be focusing? Should they, should they start with LinkedIn? Should they be everywhere? You said Instagram's blowing up, but I mean, I, I don't know if I've closed any deals through Instagram yet, but I'm not, I'll probably no, go back and, and honestly, look at my metrics. And let me just preference. I'm not saying that, right? right. I'm, what I'm saying is that as things are evolving, you've got to watch what channels people are moving to at, at a high rate, right? Right. Um, whether or not that's – I haven't I haven't closed any deals with Instagram either. I've been on there for a long time. But I would say that LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn is if, – if you're in B2B and, – and here's the first thing I'll say. I'm not telling you to go anywhere to do anything. What I'm telling you is go pick, look at the data first to figure out who's there and how many of them are there. Right. What's your market share? And if your market share is high, which I'm guessing it is on LinkedIn, you go in, you buy LinkedIn Sales Navigator, and here's where most salespeople really suck in today's buying environment. You're not selling to one person. There's no such thing as a decision maker anymore. What there is is a buying party, right? There's a ton of people that are going to make a decision together, which makes buzz selling in the B2B world even harder than it's ever been because I not only have to convince Wes to buy it, I got to convince Wes's secretary, his, his, you know, his business partner. So when you're going into LinkedIn, you need to start to use LinkedIn lead recommendations in sales navigator because what it does is it'll tell you, okay, your target's a VP of marketing, but here's the CMO. Here's the marketing director. Here's the marketing content director. And you need to say, okay, if my platform, the user is the content marketing director, why am I going to go straight and only to the VP of marketing? Because what's a VP of marketing going to do when I get her on the phone or him? She's not going to go to the content marketing director because the content marketing director is the one that's got to use it every freaking day. VP yeah. of marketing is not. So you've got to start understanding how to sell to multiple people early, get in front of them get visible to them, get valuable to them, and get connected to them so that when you do have that meeting, that everybody knows who you are and you know how to talk to them because you've been looking at what's important to them first, just yeah. one at a time. Yep. I, I, yeah, I try to surround them. I mean, I'll, I'll find every connection in the company because uh, I don't care how I get my foot in the door. It's from my foot in the door. Well, it, well let's, let's do tactical, right? I like to do tactical. So, Let's say that you're a, a small to medium-sized business and you want to do the land and expand model, right? Which um, is, is the easiest way to the quickest revenue, right? Expand your current accounts. Um, a lot of times what will happen is you might have sold to, you know, you sold to one person, right? You've had one conversation. But what have you done and how have you gotten connected in that process you know, before the sale or after, right? Which is a lot of times it's simple. Going and visiting their LinkedIn profile, letting them know that you exist, right? Because on LinkedIn, I can see that Wes is connected to, the CEO is connected to the vice president of marketing. They can see that with me too. If they see that I'm connected to the vice president of marketing, I can now send them an, a, an invite that's personalized and say, hey, you know, 
working closely with Patricia. Love what you guys are doing over there. Saw that you just made the, you know, just made some you know local list about best restaurants. I don't care what it is, right? But you can start to use other connections to personalize your invites to get connected to the people higher. Salespeople aren't doing that, right? Right. They're not. They're not doing those those little things because if you think about email as your as your marketing strategy, email now is your social feed. Yeah, I drip my content that I want strategically in front of the right buyers on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Because the old days of just sending the email, that's how you stay in front of your customers, that's over. It's even better now. I can stay in front of them all day. I can put such great content in front of them, and I can educate them you know, to a conversation, through a conversation, and to have another conversation if I have my right content strategy in sales. Right. Now... But how do you teach a bunch of 25, 30 year old salespeople to be grown up and mature and conscientious? You know, because I'm just glad I made all my mistakes in high school and my early jobs, you know, before the Internet. <laughs> I don't I, honestly I don't I don't that, that's never an issue. I mean, I think millennials of all people. They, they, they get social media, but they're actually worse than Gen Xers at social media when it comes to sales because, you know, they don't understand. They've only used it for fun and entertainment, you know. They, so millennials, yes, you do have to get to them a little bit differently, right? You have to kind of give them a different perspective. Like, hey, you know what? You just connected with your buddy. Why don't you ask your buddy about his dad's business, right? Like, <laughs> Right? Like, yo, your buddy, right? Doesn't his dad own a, den- uh, you know, a dental shop where you, where you sell, you know, dental hygiene services, whatever it is? Uh, you got to, this is the way that you got to get millennials to think. It's about connecting with the right people, strategy. You know, that's why buyer persona is so important. Because if they are, most millennials don't understand who they're even selling to. They're just there to sell because that's all they know. Just dial the phone, get somebody on there and just get to them. But now when they know strategically, like, Okay, here's here's the ten target accounts I'm going after. Here's all the decision makers in those accounts. They know social good enough to go figure out how to get there, right? Technology is a big piece of this because technology makes efficiency. If you don't have the technology around, you know, you're wasting time manually. Right. But if you give them the right technologies, if you give them the right process, process, you let them know who their buyer is, and you say, you know what, go to work with a process. They do it, and they do it faster and better than anyone else. They just need more direction than a Gen X or a baby boomer. Right. Well, the problem is the um, – is that a cat? Yeah. Let me see. You got to pull the cat out, man. Let me see if I can grab it. You're a, a leopard. cat guy? I don't know. Look, he's a leopard. <laughs> That's awesome. I got a big old dog. You hear him when he comes around. There's no hiding him. <laughs> uh, but so, so do these do these millennial or uh, you know Gen X slash baby boom managers? Do they do they even know how to train their people how to act? Because you know they didn't grow up with it. I don't. I don't. I don't think a lot of them know how to train in the first place, regardless of social, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. But That's for damn I mean, sure. I mean, a good sales leader says, you know what? I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to our buyers, right? If that means there's new channels, let's do it, right? Because I'm not just going to pigeonhole my sales reps into being able to get a hold of one person on one channel because that is just absurdity to me. Like, you know, you, what you do with social is you open up new mediums for communication. And I'll tell you that if you if you can open up new mediums, that's like saying, well, I only have one telephone in a sales office. Well, should we buy five? Mm. <laughs> right? Like, should well, should we give should we give five sales reps one phone? That'd be that'd be absurd, right? I mean, it's the same thing with social. Why would we why would we close off mediums that are consistently having conversation like Twitter? Twitter, believe it or not, if you want to hear all the do, doom and zoom and whatever they call the engagement on Twitter is as high as it's ever been. The, the numbers are there, right? The revenue's not, but I don't give a shit about revenue. I'm sorry, I care, I care about conversation. People are the right people there. And am I able to start conversation there? And am I able to add value to my buyers and move offline? Absolutely. I've created more sales conversations on Twitter that I've moved offline than any other channel. That's how you have to think about sales today. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, that's good. Uh, and it's true because I, yeah, just be everywhere, right? I mean, that's that's the goal. Obviously, you want to be where your prospects are, and you can look that up to a degree, but also you can use technology intelligently to help you be everywhere uh, to so you're in front of your prospects when they're ready to buy or when they're curious, right, when they're ready to start making a decision. And then that's where the automation you know, the processes come in and, and you can you set up alert, right? There's technology to set up alerts and really give your sales team the, the data that they need without having to spend all day on social. I think that's where a lot of people don't get it, right? So, but the other thing is just teaching your salespeople to be social is a really, really good thing, in my opinion. Yeah. Because, you know, what happens to a lot of sales reps is they come in, they sit at their desk, they dial their 100 dials just to get to those numbers, right? And they get out of their desk and they leave and they don't even think about sales all weekend. Right. But here's the thing. You train a salesperson how to connect with a buyer and you get one that's hungry, especially. And they know that on the weekend when they're laying on the couch watching the Alabama football game, that they can look at Twitter and see that one of their buyers loves Alabama, too, or a potential buyer. Yeah. And they can, they can start to talk about the game. Oh, go Bama, right? We're kill-, you know. And the next thing they know, they go, hey, I'd love to have an offline conversation with you. Did you go to Alabama? Yeah. Like. You're, I was here as CEO at a you know, Fortune 500 company. Man, I'm coming to Alabama in two weeks. Dude, these, the, when salespeople understand that the, this little stuff that's happening all the time is the biggest driver of a sales conversation, yep. it's a powerful thing because they'll start using it 365 days a year to sell the right way. Yeah, yeah just being aware. Because really, social just makes it easy to find the common ground. You know, you just got to be open to it. Because I... Yeah, I've told the story many times. I was, um, oh man, when was it? It was about 2002 maybe. Um, and I found a database of uh, academy graduates. So West Point, Air Force, Annapolis. Uh, and one of my target accounts was Sprint. And one of the three, that they had three divisions, and I only sold into one of them that, that used our technology. And that president of that division was a West Point grad. So I found out and sent him an email, just basically said, hey, you know, would you, uh, would you ever do business with a lowly Air Force grad, right? You know, and, and oh, yeah, beat Navy, All right? Boom. Immediate email, introduced me to his VP. I'm in. I was one of the few guys that made my quota because that was in tech sales and, you know, the whole implode.com implosion was happening. So this was, this was actually, yeah, late 02 was when I started and ran them all the way through 03. I was laid off in 04. And I was one of like two or three people in the company that made my quota the previous year, but I was the youngest, last, last hired, first fired kind of deal. But all through one connection, just connecting the dots. Well, you know, it's funny you said, you said that. So one of the things I teach is, I always say, you know, let's let's take out social media, right? What what's the one thing that happen has to happen to to get a sale, right? You have to start a conversation, right? Every sale starts with a conversation, and every sale ends with a conversation. How that happens or where that happens is absolutely irrelevant, right? Yep. Because the only thing that matters in sales is that you're on the phone with the right people, you know. And a lot of times, what I think is a little bit different is. It's how you get on the phone with people that matters, right? right? Like, like, yes, I get it. If you dial enough people, you will get somebody on the phone. But I would love to see how that, how efficient that is over time, right? And right. how how well that equates to revenue, right? But the moral of the story is, I call it social value messaging. We all struggle getting into conversation in sales for one reason, because our messaging sucks. Mm-hmm. Our communication. To, to, to ask for that sucks, right? A lot of times how we ask, how we, we didn't earn it, right? Which is not to say that you have to earn it every time because that's not true. But a majority of the time, all you got to do is go and look at people's social profiles. There's a tool called social360.me. It's a free Google Chrome plugin. And if you use that tool, what essentially will happen is you hover over somebody's LinkedIn profile they're just their link to their LinkedIn profile. This tool will pull every single social channel that they're on, and it will tell you that they're on LinkedIn, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, or they're not on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, right? I look at a cloud score, right? The only thing I look at a cloud score for is 
the, the, uh, how much time somebody spends on social. If it's under 40, you put them in the traditional bucket, and I'm telling you right now, go to a conference to try to get to them, send them a mailer or cold call them because you're not going to get them on social. But if they're at 40 or higher, what you've just been given is data to tell you that they are active somewhere. Now, the tool will tell you where are they active. Right. And you leverage the tool to understand that that's their communication medium. That's somewhere where I can go. And you know what? You go to that medium. I would say that you put a little bit of an engagement, value engagement strategy in there, right? Share a webinar, tag them, let them know that you're there. Let them know you're trying to help them personally and professionally, and then work your way offline, right? But Mm -hmm. use social value messaging, which is to say, okay, I've had engagement with them. I'm going to reference the engagement, and then I'm going to send that in a message, and I'm going to try to find commonality. And your emails will transform. People will start to answer your emails because of one reason right they know that you care in some form and the the personalization that you'll use from that engagement will tell them hey you know what law of law of reciprocity reciprocity. yeah okay so i hate (laughs) that word but but this is what happens in sales the the more you give the easier it is for people to want to give you their time and money yeah amen so you mentioned like setting alerts or alarms. What's a, like, what's a common thing you, you set or are you using like Google alerts or what are you using? Um, so it just depends for like, if you're looking for like buying triggers or buying signals, you know, I, I like advanced search. You can set up like Twitter advanced search. Um, you know, there's some tools and technologies out there. There's like mention, um, mention analytics. I mean, there's a whole bunch of like social trigger tools um, there's brand watch, which is a little bit more pricey. It's probably like the enterprise level, but like brand watch, you put in super crazy booly on search terms from sentiment and stuff, and it will alert you when somebody says something or does something so that you don't have to look for it in this crazy world we live in. Right. But, yeah. but the, the toughest part is to say, how do I take that information and how do I actually get into conversation that's the toughest part for salespeople, even if you give them the data in today's selling landscape. Right. Very cool. Yeah, I just want a couple of specifics because, you know, we hear about alerts, but it's like. So I'll give you I'll give your, your audience the best tool that they're going to. This is going to be a game changer. So what we struggle with in sales today is data. Right. Um, especially in the marketing automation world, because we think that we're going to go out to zoom info and buy a bunch of data and it's going to be good. And most of the time that is not true, right? You might get lucky. So there's a tool called lead IQ and it's a very, very, very cheap, uh, prospecting tool. It's a Google Chrome plugin. And essentially you can go into LinkedIn, you can do an advanced Boolean search. You can pull up everybody that meets that criteria. Let's say VP of sales at finance in Boston, Massachusetts, um, and you know, Boston, I don't know, on the East side, 10 miles outside of Boston, right? We can do that. We can, we can, it, what LinkedIn sales navigator will do is it'll tell us every single person and how many people fit that criteria, right? We can take that data. We can hit lead IQ button, Google Chrome plugin. It'll pull up all those people. And what it'll do is it'll go out and it'll verify their email address to make sure that it's verified. And it will tell you who's not verified. You can take that data, right? And now what I would highly recommend is you take that data, upload that, go find them in Twitter, right? Now you go into, even in Facebook, if you want to run, if you want to be real smart in marketing or sales, you upload that email list into Facebook ads and you start to put content in front of them, right? But what Lead IQ, the game changer piece of this is that it efficiently lets you go into these social tools and pull out the data, which is the number one thing we all want in sales, right? It's their phone number and their email address. And, and, and this is where it takes it even further. Lots of tools will do that, but the problem is not lots of tools will verify that data. They actually go out and they verify it. And then they put it, it put, goes into a Google doc or it pushes into your Salesforce or your CRM. Man. All right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If y'all don't do that, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, and this... social360.me because that's where most people are, are are lost is how do I know who to engage with? You know, download that tool, hover over their LinkedIn profile, right? figure out what their cloud score is, see what channels they're on, 
and then leverage that information to go to them one-to-one outbound versus inbound. Yeah. All right. That, I think, is a good place to end on. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So where should people find you? Where do I send them to find more about you? So, um, you know, any social channel. I practice what I preach. I'm very, very, very heavily engaged. Um, You know, if you have questions, DM me on LinkedIn, right? Maybe I can answer. Maybe I can't. If you're interested, I do have a 12-week social selling course, Nuts to Bolts. Um, 12 modules, 60 videos. It's all action process. Right. Not well, no ideology, right? So if you really want to get the tools that you need to implement the strategy over time, that's a great place to start. Um, but I'd say connect with me first because I might be able to, you know, hook you up or give you some advice first. Make sure it's, you know, it's the right course for you. I don't want you to buy something that might not help you fix your problems. Right. And, uh, and we'll link to you cause, uh, Kosakowski isn't exactly Smith, is it? But it is spelled yeah, just like it Jack sounds. Kosakowski, and he's the founder of a, like a billion dollar nonprofit. So, oh okay, junior junior achievement. All right. So, uh, and we'll link as well at skillslab.io, right? Yep, that's it. All right. So we'll link to that, uh, both of those, and uh, big people can find you online. Well, man, this has been great. Thanks for coming on the Sales Podcast. It's uh, I'm glad we were able to reschedule and get you in. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, Wes. All right, dude. Have a great night. All right, you too. Process, process, process. That's why I have my Process Before Login program. It's free. It's a free download if you go to thesaleswhisperer.com forward slash PBL. stands for Process Before Login. It's a free planning tool you can get. That's why Jack is making some noise and an impact because he has processes. He follows processes. He applies them. You know, I tell everybody, whatever you do two or three times a day, four or five times a week, figure out a process and then automate it if you can. So Jack is doing that for social selling. That's how he's turning social marketing into social selling and making money. All right. You've got to do this uh, to be effective, to be efficient, to be profitable. I always say time kills deals. So if you're fiddle farting around, always uh, being inefficient, always repeating yourself on things, then you're not getting as many deals done. You're taking longer to close a deal. uh, So that deal runs a risk of not closing, but then you can't get to the others. You can't nurture those and bring those along. So have a process for creating visibility. Understand, like you said, multi-touch multimedia, multi-touch attribution he was talking about. Surrounding your buyer digitally. You know, you got to go where they are. Maybe it's Pinterest, right? Maybe it's the Yellow Pages. Uh, maybe it's Snapchat. Depends on your audience. But you need to be everywhere they are. Everyone is more distracted. That you know, I, I'm communicating right now. I've got Slack open. I'm using Skype Messenger. I'm using Facebook Messenger. I've got notes in Evernote. I've got uh, text messages coming in. I have emails coming in. I have voicemails coming in. Uh, good old email. I've got LinkedIn messages. So be where your prospects and customers are. Okay, and you can't wing that anymore. You can't shoot from the hip. You need processes for that. Okay, you got to start the conversation, control the conversation, and whoever's asking the questions is in charge of the conversation. So you and I as salespeople are in charge of structure. The prospect is in charge of content. We get into that a lot on the Make Every Sale course. Um, So, hey, thanks for listening. Be sure to share some comments. Give us a five-star review. Let Jack and me know you're listening. Hit us up on the Twitters. Uh, let us know you're out there. Okay. Uh, and then as I said, at the top of the show, best CRM for me.com free tool to find out what you need, what's right for you. And then refer West.com. I'll send you some money. If you send me people looking for a platform and they buy from me. All right. I'm not going to push them around. It's a very laid back session. I help them uncover what they truly need and then get it. Okay. Thanks for listening, and always remember to sell different.